Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! Backstory Basically, a new family moved into my neighborhood. The kid from the family was trying to introduce himself to other neighbors and this was 2018 pre-COVID. I was playing Fortnite since I was bored of my other games and decided to try it out. So yeah, I was playing Fortnite in my room when I heard a knock at my front door. My mom answered the door and my mom told me about the conversation. Hi, can I help you? The entitled kid tells her, Yeah, I just moved in and I'm trying to make friends. Well, I have a son he's playing video games upstairs. I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Okay, cool, thanks. So he came up to my room and asked what I was doing. I said I was just playing some Fortnite. He asked if he could play and I said yeah, sure, go for it. He played a couple of games when his mom came and knocked. My mom directed her to my room and went back to the kitchen and she was cooking dinner. I told him see you later and he seemed like a cool kid. The next day my mom told me the kid called and asked if I wanted to come over and I said yeah, sure, why not? So I brought my laptop over to his house and he asked if we could play Fortnite again. I said sure, sounds good. Then as he was playing I needed to use the bathroom. As I was on the toilet I overheard the kid and mother talking about my laptop. This happened 3 years ago. So this is how I remember the conversation. His mother asks him, Having fun? Yeah, the laptop is so cool. And I can play Fortnite, I wish I had it. Well then, we can keep it. He wouldn't mind anyway. Really? Thanks, mom. I was shocked when I heard this. I quickly finished up and came back. I said hi to his mom and said, It's best if I start going. The mom hesitated and said, No, stay. You're having fun. I said, Yeah, but I best be off. The mom then locked the door and said, You're not leaving. Where's the laptop? I said, What do you mean? It's mine. Apparently, the family was poor and deserved a laptop so he can continue being a good student. I told her to go buy one. You can get a cheap laptop or a console which also runs games. She said, you're such a loser. You don't need one. You're 15 and he's 13, so why do you care? His mom wouldn't let me out until I gave the laptop. I tried to force my way out, but then she threatened to hit me with a belt. I said, fine, take it. I pretended to give the laptop then went to the bathroom and called my mom to call the police. Cops came around 10 minutes later with my mom and knocked hard. The entitled mother panicked and opened the door shakily. I explained what happened and proved it was my laptop by the certificate and the computer. And she ended up being arrested for attempted theft and a possible kidnapping. Her son still gives me death stares. Crazy. So this happened to my mom and me around two months ago. Background. My parents and I live next to a park in several fields. During the lockdown, tons of people went out to go for a walk there. Even though they should stay at home. The streets around our neighborhood are quite narrow, so they were crowded with parked cars and people walking on the street. Some lowlifes got aggressive when you drove past them. One son of a bee slapped my window because he had to drag his lazy self onto the sidewalk instead of further walking on the street. I just side-eyed him and drove off. When you drive through our main gate there is a 46 meters, around 150 feet. When you drive through our main gate there is around 150 foot long driveway leading to our house and the garages. When we are at home we usually leave the main gate open. This led to several cars standing in front of our garages and blocking the pathway. Most of our neighbors, my parents and me were pretty annoyed by those masses of cars and humans. A lot of people left their trash on the ground too. Another important fact. During the climax of the lockdown, there was a law forbidding you to be in a group bigger than two people. Except family of course. Breaking this law resulted in a 200 euro fine. The story. My mom and I went grocery shopping. On the way back home we were standing in our street, waiting for the gate to open so we could drive onto our estate. 
Then Mega Karen came along with her minions Karen and Mini Karen, each pushing their offspring in a buggy. There was enough space for them to walk past our car one by one, but it seems like the trinity of Karens wanted to walk side by side. Mega Karen approached our car and knocked on the driver's window. I lit the window down and she immediately started yapping that we are not allowed to drive or park. I stayed calm and asked her if she's joking. We are living here. And she continued with her nonsense that we are not allowed to stand or to park here and we should please move our car so she could get through. At this point, my mother stepped out of the car and explained to Mega Karen and her dumb minions that they could just walk around the car one by one. But apparently they didn't want to do that. This nonsense continued for around 2 to 3 minutes. Then Mini Karen stepped in to calm the Mega Karen down but didn't really help. In fact, it got worse. Because Karen came in and said, My mom is a bad mother and human because she argued with a mother of a small kid and this would frighten the children. Well, my mother got really mad. She's a great mother and she knows that. At this point, I started to chat with a friend and blended the argument out. My mom can be a pretty intimidating person and she's great at provoking people when she wants to. So I knew she didn't need my help. After some time, Mega Karen started screeching that she was going to call the police on my mom. My mom knew she did nothing wrong so she insisted. Mega Karen called the police and she told him that she was just walking here and we started intimidating her for no reason and she felt threatened and yada yada yada. A short time after Mega Karen called the police, one policewoman and a policeman arrived. Immediately after they got out, Mega Karen and Karen started telling them that we threatened them, blocked the road and so on. The funny thing is that the policewoman called knows my mom. Her husband was a patient of her and they know each other from a local dog park. The policeman stayed with the Karens. Then later she came over to ask for our story too. After I did my statement, I asked the policewoman if I could leave. I needed to bring the groceries inside. She said yes, so I grabbed the groceries and I went in. Around half an hour later, my mom came in with a big evil grin on her face. Apparently, Mega Karen, Karen and Mini Karen wanted to report us for threatening them. But the policewoman turned the tables on them and told them that they have violated the lockdown law and they need to pay 200 euros each. Apparently, Mega Karen didn't like that, so she continued arguing with the cops. When they didn't do what she wanted, she got angry. She slapped the wing mirror from my mother's car, folded it forward and scratched the car. Tried to attack my mother and the policewoman and called the policeman who grabbed her dumb kid, a son of a bee, and told him to get lost, leading to her getting arrested. After her arrest, she tried to spit at my mother and told her she's going to regret this and that she will come after her. She faced charges for verbally and physically attacking a police officer, attacking and threatening my mother and damaging my mother's car. Range Rover in a special effect British racing green equals very expensive to repair. She also needed to pay the 200 euros for disobeying the lockdown law. Several weeks later, I heard from my dad, who's my mom's lawyer, that she had to pay a big fine, was on probation and needed to pay the repair for my mother's car. A great thing though, she got a record leading to her getting investigated at her workplace. But the greatest thing, because she was divorcing from her father, at the same time, the lawyer of the husband used her little tantrum against her so she lost the main custody to her kid. There are so many insane people now. Context. I was about 16 when this happened. My younger brother and I lived in a neighborhood with a lot of houses. Usually a lot of kids quarreled but that was about it. So one day my brother and I went down to the playground to play. The entitled kid tells me, Hey, you look pretty fast. Do you want to race to the flagpole? Sure, I can ask my little brother to do a countdown. So my younger brother goes, 3, 2, 1, go. 
And so the entitled kid and I start running to the flagpole and at this point I'm way ahead of him. I won, yay! I yell. How dare you beat me? I'm the fastest runner in the block. Let's have another round. So me and him race again and again for a long time as the entitled kid couldn't accept the fact that I was faster than him. Ah, I admit defeat. I'll be back. So my younger brother and I start playing catch. And it's here that the story gets interesting. Hey again. The entitled kid gets back. Um, hi. Then out of nowhere he pulls out a kitchen knife and attacks my leg. And there is a lot of blood that comes out. My younger brother yells at him. What the hell did you do? I'm in so much pain. The entitled kid runs away and the younger brother and I head home. What's happened to you? My mom asks. My brother tells her. And entitled kid outside stabbed brother in the leg. My mom bandages up my wound and gives me the first aid. She and my younger brother go to the entitled kid's house to confront the entitled mother. This is the part where I'm at home resting, so this part is my brother's description of the story. Excuse me, but your son stabbed my son in the leg, and he's bleeding like crazy. Relax, it's just a stab. Ask your son to be less of a crybaby, won't ya? Just a stab? You almost passed out. Alright, listen here, lady. I don't know what happened, but you need to stop insulting my son. Insult your son? He stabbed my son. That is a crime. Listen, if you don't get out of my doorstep, I am calling the police. My mom walks away and secretly calls the police. A few minutes later, the cops arrive and she goes back to the entitled mother's house. What's going on here? This lady's son stabbed my son in the leg and now she calls him a crybaby. Your son needs to stop being so whiny. Listen here, ma'am. Stabbing someone is a serious offense. It could lead to jail time. So what? What are you going to do about it, huh? Arrest me? Yes, that's what we're going to do. The police got some witness reports of neighbors who also saw the entitled kid stab me. And the police ended up arresting the entitled mother and putting the entitled kid into juvenile detention. I recently posted a story to the sub about my girlfriend's entitled mother nearly ruining my and my parents' New Year's party. Sam, my girlfriend, didn't want to be with her mother on New Year's Day because of the way she acted the night before. Sam was at my house because she didn't really have anywhere else to be. My parents and siblings were out of the house because they were out at other parties and I opted to stay home with Sam. They know I hate going to other people's parties especially with people I don't know. It was probably about 9 or 10 at night and Sam and I were doing something when we heard a crash downstairs. I thought it was my parents and we proceeded to do what we were doing. We heard another crash and knew something was up. I called my mom and asked where she was. I heard music in the background and immediately knew she was still out. She told me that she, my dad, brother and sister were at her co-worker's party. I hung up and got scared. I put together the bow in my room and gave Sam an arrow to stab with and a pair of scissors. I called both the police and my neighbor, who's an FBI agent. After both calls, Sam and I go downstairs to investigate. From the top of the stairs, I can see a vase that my great-grandmother had given to us before she passed shattered on the floor. And I got a rush of emotion. Sadness, anger, the feeling of wanting to hurt the person who did this. Both my new PS4 Pro and PS VR were left out for the day because people were using them the night before. Both were gone with no traces of where they went. I was livid. How could someone go into a random person's house, just break and take our stuff like that? Sam and I walked into the kitchen. I see the entitled mother grabbing china and porcelain plates. Silverware that were also given by my great-grandmother and spices. We don't say anything and wait to see what she does. She finally turned around to walk away and saw us. She lightly placed the bag on the floor and pulled out a large kitchen knife. One of the ones from the house. Ah, I did not expect anyone to be here. She says. I tell her, police and my FBI neighbor are on their way as we speak. 
If you get me arrested, I will hurt you. She then charged me with her knife in. I shot her in the leg with my bow that I had ready to shoot. She fell to the floor and started screaming in what sounded like an Eastern European language. She then yells at me in English. When the cops get here, I'm telling them you shot me in my house. I told her to stay where she was and not to do anything. About five minutes later, I hear police sirens and a knock at the door. I open it and it's my neighbor and two armed police officers. I show them to where the entitled mother is laying on the ground and she immediately starts yelling, he broke into my house, tried stealing my stuff and shot me in the leg with a bow and arrow. One of the police officers tells her, but he was the one who called us. Lies! Those are all lies. My neighbor says, OP is my neighbor. He lives here. The entitled mother scowled at the neighbor and said, You're lying. You're just saying that to keep OP out of trouble. Do you have proof of residence? The other police officer asks her. It's in the safe. Okay, what's the password? It's APCD. I say, no, it's not. It's actually ZYXW and proceed to input the real password and the safe opens. No, that's not true. He must have reset the password or something. Oh yeah? We also have security cameras right there, there, there and there. The entitled mother's face just turned to shock as I went and showed both cops and my neighbor the security footage. She yelled at me, you little n-word. She and Sam are white and I'm half black. Nobody likes you or will ever like you. I don't understand why my daughter would date such a bad person as you. She probably just feels bad that no one likes you. She ripped the arrow out of her leg and threw it at me. The cops promptly arrested her and took her to the cop car. She was screaming obscenities and racial slurs towards me all the way to the car. I feel terribly bad for Sam because... I got her mother arrested, but actions like that have consequences. Entitlement is an extremely stupid defense for this. Last night I came home and walked into the kitchen where my mother-in-law and wife are standing with an enormous bag of small carrot-shaped white root vegetables. Exhausted from a long day, I absent-mindedly asked, are those white carrots? The existence of radishes temporarily eluding my consciousness. My mother-in-law and wife in enthusiastic unison chime in that yes, they are indeed carrots. Go ahead and try one. My mother-in-law encourages with an overzealousness that brings me to my senses. My mother-in-law encourages with an overzealousness that brings me to my senses. No, no, these are not carrots. Game on, mama, game on. I will eat this raw root vegetable and get you two as well. I rinse one off and snack into it as my wife and mother-in-law attempt to stifle their giggles. I feign confusion at the reaction. What are y'all laughing about? My wife laughs and tells me, what's it taste like? Um, a carrot, I say. Maybe a little less sweet. You're lying. My mother-in-law shoots back. The lady who gave them to me said they are radishes. My face betrays nothing. I have crunched the bunjit, peppery taste and melded it into an earnest mask of enjoyment. The sporadic laughter from my wife and mother-in-law has ceased. Well, I don't know who said that but this definitely tastes like a carrot. Maybe I just got the one carrot mixed in with the radishes. I grab another, rinse it and go to the chum town. Michu, I double down. Nope, these are definitely carrots. My mother-in-law exasperated that either I'm a master of deception or that she in fact did get the wrong bag of veggies. Rinses one off, takes a massive bite and immediately spits it back out. I'm the one who's laughing now but not a typical giggle and a prorous guffaw of triumph. I have one. Now to get the taste of radish out of my mouth. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.